Eid. Welcome everyone. <laughs> Many words. Hello. We have words. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone to the Heroes Hearth channel. Jules and Coffee, thank you for the handoff. The countdown was very, very helpful. Uh, welcome everyone here. I know many of you are grubbers, but if we have some non-grubbers as well, first of all, a big warm welcome to everyone from the Twitch Heroes Hearth regulars. Uh, also, hello to youtube.com slash heroes hearth, which you guys should all subscribe to it's free and you can see a lot of cool amazing content uh, a little bit of background on heroes hearth heroes hearth is a big player in the heroes of the storm scene i've happily coexisted and worked with them in uh, my during my time in heroes of the storm and they are a community oriented organization that has done a lot of cool stuff in heroes of the storm and now with fight night this friday they're going to be entering the warcraft 3 uh, hemisphere, atmosphere, stratosphere, esports sphere, something. They're going to be entering it insofar as that works. Uh, so they got this thing coming up, Fight Night. So first of all, uh, I'm going to tell you about Fight Night. And then I'm going to tell you what this segment is all about. Because we are in Grubby's Crash Course. Uh, Fight Night is going to be a really cool, simple show match. Casted by myself and Kendrick Swish who I've done a lot of casting with as well in Heroes of the Storm. Great guy, he's from Germany, lovely accent, really nice. Thank you for subscribing, Mike Daddy Jr. to Heroes Hearth, very nice. First one ever, very cool. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be casting that with him and our first two contestants of this show match are going to be Insuperable and Hunter. Insuperable from Canada and Hunter from Peru. I believe, made in Peru. Uh, they're going to be playing a best of five and the prize money for the winner will be $200. The prize money for the loser, $100 because Heroes Hearth is awesome. They want to make sure that everyone can walk away with a little bit of extra. Also entering the system for, thank you for the subs guys, awesome, Jeta, Ra, Homi and Faume, welcome. Uh, they want to make sure that uh, everyone can get something out of that. And it's also really cool what they're doing with bits. You know, the Twitch cheer bits system. All the bits that are coming in during fight night are going to be... Um... <laughs> nice. I know that lovely lady. Thank you for Cassandra. Uh, finally putting some good use to that uh, Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> uh, all the cheer bits that are coming in are going to get split. One quarter to player one, one quarter to player two, 40% into a communal prize pool, a bounty, and 10% to the amazing production of Heroes Hearth. Now, I hope you guys are going to enjoy the show a lot. I think it's going to be really fun to be casting some Warcraft 3, uh, but this is going to be really cool. And every two weeks on Friday, we'll return, unless someone like gets sick and can't make it. Uh, we're going to return every fr uh, other Friday night for the winner of the previous match to find a new challenger and they will also play for the bounty prize pool so that bounty that keeps growing maybe in super bowl will run away with it get three wins in a row get a huge bounty and then suddenly meet someone that he can't defeat or he thinks and he can walk away with his tail between his legs keep the bounty cash in the dirty big ones but he doesn't get to play anymore and he will get banned for a few weeks as well. Banned, kind of a dramatic word, but he can't come back for a while. Maybe three play days. But if he loses, he plays and he dares and he loses, the whole bounty goes to the new player. So it's a really cool system. Now, <clears throat> that is the system that they have been successfully employing for very... Uh, um, for a great interest in Heroes of the Storm. They're now coming into Warcraft 3 with this system as well. But what is Warcraft 3? Uh, you know, what is Warcraft 3? I know World of Warcraft, I know Hearthstone, I know even that new game Overwatch and that really cool new one Diablo Immortal, but what is Warcraft 3? And I thought that Warcraft 3 was just a small game within World of Warcraft, no. Actually, World of Warcraft was built on the same engine as Warcraft 3. 
just like Heroes of the Storm was built on the StarCraft engine. And Warcraft 3 preceded World of Warcraft. It's true, it's true. So what is Warcraft 3? It's an RTS that delved into a completely new direction. Yeah, Warcraft 3 started combining elements of role-playing game together with RTS, real-time strategy. So it's like a real-time strategy, but a bit slower pace than some, though you may not guess it if you are new to Warcraft 3, it will seem quick-paced, uh, with some role-playing elements, with some heroes. And I think that's what makes it really unique. There's a lot of unique, cool things about this 17-year-old game. And it may seem a little daunting if you come into the game for the first time. My job tonight is to make sure that you can understand the action that you're following a little bit. You understand what makes a player win, what makes a player lose in Warcraft 3, how the four different races work, what is creeping and how do you do it, uh, what are the win conditions. That's what I'm going to be teaching you. So we're going to be playing some games tonight. We're, and <laughs> don't worry, the webcam will get smaller. Uh, we're going to be playing some games tonight and we're going to be explaining some. So I'm assuming that there's a good amount of people watching this that have maybe never watched Warcraft 3 or very casually and that may only be familiar with the custom game section as of right now. So the first thing I want to do is just go through a replay and it doesn't really matter too much what's going on uh, overall. Like it's not too precise or anything like that. But we're just going to go over a replay and we want to see, okay, how is this game played out? And I just want to look at some basics. So we're going to make the webcam a little bit smaller. So Warcraft 3 is a real-time strategy game. That means that you'll be using a combination of gold, which you can see up here, and lumber, which you can see up here, to build everything you could possibly build. But why would you build anything? Is this SimCity, you ask? No, you semi-astute viewer. This is not SimCity. Building is part of it, but ultimately the goal is Warcraft. So there'll be some war, but don't worry, it's just in a game. So what is the goal of the game in Warcraft 3? Well, destroy all of the opponent's buildings. That's it. Destroy all of the opponent's buildings. If you do so, you win the game. But unlike in Heroes of the Storm, the game doesn't just end only when you blow up the enemy's core. And uh, trying to forfeit, like in some other MOBAs, some other lesser MOBAs, uh, which isn't possible in Heroes of the Storm, uh, that's actually very okay in Warcraft 3. Because usually in Warcraft 3, you will see that you are going to lose before it actually happens. It is in fact more normal to leave the game when you know you are going to be losing than to stay until the very end and to try and just make them eliminate all your buildings. If you lose large portions of your heroes, if you lose large portions of your army, the game could be over already, all right? So now that I know, Grubby, that you need to destroy all the opponent's buildings, how do I do it? Well. You're gonna gather the two primary resources, gold from the gold mine, which generally starts with about 12,000 gold, and you're gonna send up to five peons inside the gold mine. This is me. I played this game on Saturday. I have an opponent. My opponent is here. His name is Relic. If you turn it around, you'll get a killer. And that's what I do when I meet one. Turn around 360 degrees and sprint away. Because I only like virtual Warcraft, but in real life I practice love. He's got five workers in his mine as well. In this entangled gold mine, there's five wisps. One, two, three, four, and five. Yay! So, five wisps in this mine, and I have five peons in my gold mine. After you fill up the gold mine, you will try to also get some lumber which you do by cutting trees, because filthy orcs with their axes always hacking, biting, burning. However, Warriors. night elves are nice creatures. Good night elf. Their wisps symbiosis with the trees and love and happiness, and they don't kill the trees. So wisps actually 
stay on a tree and they will gain lumber periodically which you can see by the little green floaty number so wisps maintain the trees but they get lumber and orcs bite and burn all right so now we know the elements of how to gain resources now the question is how do we spend it unit producing structures like barracks and hero producing structures like the altar of storms which he has his equivalent of in the top left altar of elders any player can make an army up to a maximum of 100 units but many units will take up more space than one most units will be two or three or four this is said to be the amount of food that they eat so we can say that relic killer has 22 food being used and 30 maximum food capacity available as you can see in the top right so he still has room for an extra eight food an archer is two food and that means that he can have four more archers before he needs to expand his maximum food capacity this is done by building moon wells moon wells offer 10 maximum food capacity as does the tree of life one two three that's why he's 30. now 40. on my side orc burrows are what gives me food capacity i have my main base and three burrows so i have 40 maximum capacity we got the essentials down of how we can make army that it costs gold and lumber and now the question is what do we make and when do we make it well you can have up to three heroes in your army no more you can't have less than three you can go with zero heroes which is really bad but you can use it to humiliate lesser opponents if that's how you flow i generally try to humiliate people in other ways not by not going heroes just because it's so hard the level difference needs to be really really big in order to not use heroes and win sometimes people wonder hmm can't you win without heroes you can have more army yes you can but the level difference has to be big okay so generally you'll make minimum one hero you can make two or three every hero has an inventory he can carry items he or she for example uh if you can see here Actually, you know, I'm not the hero, like my face is here, but did you know it's actually not me? Look, it's the Blade Master. But I put it here because it's a good piece of real estate. But this Blade, Ma Blade Master has six inventory slots like any other hero, and it, all of them are in use. Now you can have permanent items or consumable items. Everything that has a number on it is a consumable item. Wand of Mana Steel steals mana from, for example, an enemy. Uh, heal solve heals my own units but it's non-combat only that means as soon as someone attacks my unit the effect over time of healing stops everything that doesn't have a number on it is a permanent item that gives a set stat bonus either to only the hero or in an aura around the hero boots of speed makes me run faster claws makes me hit faster uh, harder sorry Mantle of Intelligence makes me smarter. And that brings us to the three primary stats. Strength, Agility, and Intelligence. Strength gives you bonus health. Every point of strength is 25 health. It gives you bonus health regeneration. And if you are a strength hero, every hero has a primary stat, it also gives you one bonus auto attack damage per strength point. My blade master is an agility hero. That's his primary attribute. That means that every point of agility gives me one bonus damage. But if I'm not an agility hero, it still gives three points as an extra armor, which is damage reduction on the hero from everything that isn't a spell and bonus attack speed. Finally, there's intelligence, bonus mana and bonus mana regeneration. One point of intelligence is 15 mana. So. By increasing your stat points with the circlet of nobility, bonus strength, agility, and intelligence, I'm becoming better at everything. More damage, more armor, more health, more mana. The stuff of life, basically. All right. So you can only have six inventory items on one hero. This already is a very compelling argument for wanting to go for a second hero who can carry more items. Some of the consumable items that you can find 
or buy, they do effects on your entire army. For example, you can buy a heal scroll for 250 gold. And it is a 150 point heal on every unit around the hero. You can activate it instantly. It's uninterruptible and it can really bring your army back from the brink of death to healthy fighting shape once again. Having only one hero with heal scroll going on cooldown after you use it, let's say if you have two, you can use one, then you must wait a long time. That's another great argument for wanting a second hero. Heroes gain experience from a variety of things. If you kill units of the opponent, you get experience points. If you kill creeps, these neutral uh, Heroes of the Storm players would call them mercenaries. Perhaps some mercs would hit the spot. Yes, Lucio, it would. And mercs here are called creeps. And they are not nice creatures. That's why all of them must die. When you kill them, you get bonus gold, experience on your heroes, and items. For example, I just picked up a Claws of Attack plus 9. Gives me bonus damage on my Shadow Hunter every time he attacks, which is great. All right. Now, we've talked a lot about heroes, but what we haven't discussed yet is when they level up. You see a purple bar here. This is the experience index. When the purple bar goes full, a hero levels up. His Naga Sea Witch has zero experience because he hasn't killed any of my units. <laughs> so he can't level up, can she? She, sorry, she can't level up. Let's see if he kills, she kills a, hero, a unit before the end of the game. And it looks like this will not be the case because the replay full meter has been reached. And when you can't kill anything, you probably can't win. So we're going to have an excellent example of not losing the core and still losing the game, which you will see. Usually a player will say GG, which means good game, and then they will leave. It is a small token of respect for your opponent. <laughs> see my F. A small token of respect for the epic combat that the players have just conducted themselves in, and then they will leave. Other people, they ascribe to the silent departure. They will leave, but they will not uh, say GG. And that's okay too. Maybe they think it was not a good game or they don't like small talk. Very possible. We will load up another replay to continue our tutorial. If there's any questions in chat, please ask them. I will probably not see them because I'm on a roll but you can save them up and I will deal with them in due time. Okay? Ready to work. So, as you can see, heroes are very important. Maybe you got the idea so far. And I'm going to just restart the game because there was a small audio bug. We are hearing Blood Mage's Siphon Mana from one of my earlier ladder games. So we're gonna restart the game. And it's back. And the bucket's gone. Good. Uh, which one did I start? Was it the Saturday replay? Yeah. Cool. Okay, here we go. Um, as I said, heroes are very important. <laughs> Can Kodos eat a great haul? Look, right. I told you guys I'm going to be doing this crash course. And I said no question is silly enough because it's for beginners. But whether Kodos can eat great holes, I'm pretty sure you are not really asking that ethereal kish. But I'm gonna answer it anyway because someone else might be wondering. No, Kodos cannot in fact consume the enemy main base. Sadly, maybe in Reforged. So a small little aside segue addendum. You guys may be wondering, wow, so far, it sounds like a really cool game and you explain it so well. Thank you. I don't think so, but no real. Okay, thank you. Where can I get Warcraft 3 if I'm interested to actually try it out? Well, go to playwarcraft3.com. Not sponsored, actually not sponsored, but just giving you the information you're asking for in this, well, imaginary one-on-one -on -one conversation. Playwarcraft3.com. And it's 30 bucks, you can get reforged. And when you do, this version of Warcraft becomes playable already. You can download the game, 
and you can play the game. Same game I'm playing now that I'm watching replays of. And then when Reforged comes, you have everything extra that Reforged will bring, which is probably gonna be really, really cool. New graphics, new audio, etc. Okay. Um, oh, and new Jaina and Sylvana story arcs, I think, because they're a heck of a lot more relevant in World of Warcraft. Ow, I just bit my tongue. They're a heck of a lot more relevant in World of Warcraft. I think it's because I said that name. Uh, no. Uh, then in Warcraft 3. Huh? So, here we go. Uh, yes. So I said heroes are very important. That's why most players will almost always start with the altar. So if you're a new player, the first thing you want to know is, okay, what is a build order? A build order is what, or BO, which doesn't stand for body odor, though if you practice your build order a lot, the BO actually gets worse. I speak from experience, but at least I had a passion, right? Thank you, the sword, for subscribing to Hero's Heart. Really cool. Uh, you need a build order. A build order, just like in StarCraft, is a basic plan of what to build when and why and what you're gonna do with it. So the build order here, for instance, would be four peons in gold, one goes to the altar immediately. Nine seconds later, build a burrow. 10 seconds later, build a barracks. And then fill up the gold mine, five total. Then seven peons total on lumber. Build one grant, a shop, and then go upgrade your great hall to tier two. It starts at tier one, great hall. You can upgrade it to a stronghold, which will be tier two, which unlocks new power levels for your race. And then finally, it can go to tier three, which is called the fortress, which again unlocks new units, new upgrades, and all that goodness. Every race has roughly 12 to 14 different units. And there's four different races in Warcraft 3. All of them are more or less balanced. Though if you speak with any Warcraft 3 fan that has been following the game for a while, they will not be able to agree on this. Which race is better, which one is worse. And generally we find that whatever race was last played and has lost is the weakest race. And whatever place race was last played in Warcraft 3 and just won the tournament, that's the best because single results guarantee statistical accuracy. If the average Twitch chatter is to be believed, of course. And I'm no different. O almost every player will have their opinion on what is the best and the worst. Roughly, things are kind of balanced. And when you start playing the game, you probably won't notice any of this, but I'll just give you a little bit of history Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos came out in 2002 and Frozen Throne, its expansion pack, which in my opinion completed the game, came out in 2003. There has been a large burgeoning esports around it from 2003 until 2011, where it slowed down a little bit because Starcraft 2 came out, Blizzard's newer RTS, and then slowly started having a resurgence again. Some members never left, some people came back, and Warcraft 3 started growing again. <clears throat> we saw a nostalgia movement. In 2013, you had people casting the game, you had people organizing small cups and tournaments, you had players still practicing. And uh, in 2018, Reforged was announced by Blizzard, probably because of the uh, great interest among many of the core fans of the Blizzard franchise. And they thought, okay, let's, uh, let's make it more accessible because there was a lot of things actually needed to be done with Warcraft 3 to make it more playable again. And many of those changes have already happened. For example, we now have 1080 support. Uh, you no longer need to open ports on your router to create custom games. We now have a launcher, kind of a semi batonet launcher. It's not on the main one yet, but it will be soon after Reforge comes out, which is coming out this year, by the way. We've had balance patches. We've had certain bug fixes. Custom game lobbies have been cleaned up. So many cool things have happened already now. So uh, that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so you generally start with heroes and then basically a standard game of Warcraft 3 will be a mixture of defending, attacking, harassing, taking creeps, leveling up and sometimes you will expand. For instance, if you clear another gold mine where there's a set of creeps waiting, if you kill those creeps, you can then build a new main base and you can mine with double the speed. You can mine with double the speed, which is pretty cool. It means you're mining twice as much as the opponent. One of the coolest systems of all, actually, in uh, Warcraft 3 is something called upkeep. Because let me tell you first what Warcraft 3 looks like if there is no upkeep. You can see here in the top right, no upkeep. Okay? Let me tell you what it looks like. You start at 5 food and your maximum is 100 food. Heroes take up 5, workers will take up roughly 12. So 17 food is heroes and workers. Huh? And then you get a second hero, you'll be 22 food. The remaining 78 food can and will be army, let's say. Yeah. You start producing army and there's no real reason to stop. Bigger armies creep faster, deal more damage, are better, right? So you keep making army. If you're making army at a constant rate, and so am I, then our armies are growing constantly you have defender's advantage, I have defender's advantage, so who really will end up attacking? Maybe no one, right? Because you don't want to lose. Now, enter upkeep. Upkeep is a system that the bigger your army gets, the more gold you lose from that which you mine. So you're getting plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 every second. In fact, you get 10 gold per second exactly. That means in a minute, 600 gold. And you're taking those 10 gold out of the mine. Upkeep means 30% taxes. This moment you go over 50 food, you start paying upkeep and get only 70% income. You'll still be drawing 10, but you only get seven. So the price you pay for a bigger army, which can beat my smaller army, is less gold. After all, you need to pay your taxes, don't you? What that means is the moment you make a decision to have a big army, I can make a decision either to match it, also make a big army, or I can make a decision not to match it. Stay small, but fast. A fast maneuverable army that does lightning strikes, maybe on your base. Uh, maybe I'm harassing your army and then running away. You're so busy with me, you're not even realized my army isn't growing. It's actually quite small, but I'm getting a lot of gold and I'm saving up my gold. You don't have an expansion, I don't, but I'm still getting more gold because my army is small, efficient, light on its foot. And you've got this big lumbering army ready to defeat me if we meet in open combat, but I never will. I'm just skirting around the map. And then suddenly, when the time is right, boom, mass produce. And when I'm mass producing, I will start losing gold as well to upkeep, but I already saved up so much that I'm suddenly able to afford a large army. Before you know it, you're 60 food, I'm 70. So there's a big economic aspect to managing your upkeep. You can either be the greedy saving your uh, gold, or you could be the rusher. There's many different personalities that you can embody, many styles that you can embody when you play Warcraft 3. And having such meaningful decisions as whether to make army or whether not to make army makes Warcraft 3 extremely interesting and makes every game of Warcraft 3 feel fresh. Even after nearly 20 years of Warcraft 3, which is truly amazing. There are a few questions in chat as well. Who gets the taxes? No one. It's just lost. Maybe they build new maps with it. Uh, do all units move at the same speed? No, they do not. Every unit have their own movement speed. Only a few ways to increase their movement speed. The Tauren Chieftain gets a passive aura as one of his abilities. It's called Endurance Aura. It makes units move and attack faster. Undead, a race which we haven't seen here yet, but which we will know from World of Warcraft, they've got Unholy Aura. Again, movement speed and regeneration rate. You can, orc can use a speed scroll to temporarily speed up their units. Heroes can buy boots of speed to move faster. So there are a number of ways to move faster. 
Now, what do heroes do when they level up? Let's talk about that. Heroes start at level 1, and when they level up, they can go all the way to level 10. Though very few games will get to level 10. It does happen sometimes. In pro tournaments or in ladder, it has happened from time to time. Level 10 is the maximum. Once you're there, you can level up no longer. But before that, every time you level up, you get the following things. A few stat points, strength, agility and intelligence, which makes you better at fighting and controlling the map. You also get a new ability point every level that you level up. You have three basic abilities. They can be level one to three, and you've got one ultimate ability. At level six, you have the choice, but not the requirement, to pick your ultimate ability. They are extremely powerful, generally long cooldown, abilities that can change the tides of fate in a game. Tauren Chieftain, when he dies, he comes back instantly with an ability called Reincarnation, can only activate once every four minutes. Blade Master can spin his swords around in a whirling dervish, seven seconds long, making him magic immune and dealing massive damage to targets on the ground near him. The Keeper of the Grove can enter a state of tranquility where he does a massive amount of healing to all units around himself. After three seconds, you can interrupt him out of this channel. And the Goblin Alchemist can instantly sell one of the opponent's units for gold. Not only does it kill the unit instantly, but you get gold as well. Pretty cool. Every race has four possible heroes that they can choose from. There's also something called a tavern in the middle of the map. At the tavern, heroes reside. Eight different heroes can be picked from the tavern. They are called the neutral heroes. In lieu of picking one of your main heroes, you could go for a tavern hero. They get hired instantly instead of training in the altar for one minute. But if they are bought as a second hero, they do cost a little bit more lumber. 135 instead of 100. There's a price to pay for speed, after all. These eight heroes can be... These eight heroes can be uh, bought by any player. And also, unlike in MOBAs, when you pick a hero from the tavern, I still can pick it as well. It's not like when you buy the Pandaren Brewmaster from the tavern that I cannot do so myself. We can both have a Pandaren Brewmaster at the same time. Any questions so far, ladies and gentlemen? I will drink some water. Who was AFK again? <laughs> uh. Our have the so can the Kodo eat any building? <laughs> armor type, great question. How do armor types work? Okay, another really interesting part of Warcraft 3, besides what you build and when you build it and how much money you get and how you manipulate upkeep, there are ways to fight. Actually, Warcraft 3, I would say, is special among all RTSs because the controls and the fights and the army versus army battles are among the coolest in the RTS genre. Warcraft 3 fights tend to be typically quite slow, much slower than in Starcraft 2. And they are more detailed and they feel more precise than in many other RTSs. You'll generally have pretty small armies that fit in one or two control groups. You can have up to 12 units in your control group. An orc tends to have specifically a few units of every type. They don't typically mass a lot of the same unit, whereas Night Elf does do that a little bit more often, but we happen to be watching a Night Elf that also really branched out on the technology tree. Enter armor types. Grunts, I'm pausing the game for a second. The Grunt is the basic melee unit that is built at tier 1 from the Orc arsenal. He has a heavy armor, which takes bonus damage from magic attacks. He deals normal damage, which does bonus to medium. 
don't worry, you can watch this back on the YouTube video on Heroes Hearth YouTube channel. Berserkers have medium armor, so they take more damage from the grunt. They do piercing, which does more to unarm it and light. Walkers, spirit walkers, have unarmor, so they take bonus damage from spirit walkers, uh, from uh, berserkers. And the walkers deal bonus on grunts. So let's say if we had these three units against each other, the trolls should attack the tauren, the tauren should attack the grunt, and the grunt should attack the berserker. If you and I have many of these, what you attack creates really interesting uh, effects because you want the bonus damage and you want to take the less damage. It's not important right now to remember how all the units interact, but you can always just hover over it in the game yourself and see what it does. And you can plan accordingly how you're going to micro the fights. Heroes are special. They have hero damage and hero armor, and that is quite beneficial, generally speaking. Someone asked to explain the town portal. So if players did not have a town portal, anytime they would be on the map and they would get caught in a fight that they don't want, they could lose everything and the game would be over and that would not be very interesting. People would tend to stand a lot in their base, afraid to go out. Players start games with a town portal. The first hero you make will be equipped with a town portal scroll. It's a consumable and it can be used to teleport the hero and all of the nearby troops to a target friendly town hall. You can rebuy them as well. They cost 350 gold, which in terms of Warcraft 3 economy is very expensive. But it's worth it, right? Because you could lose the game if you don't. There's one more thing I want to tell you. And I'm sure there's more that we didn't cover yet. But one more thing I would like to tell you before we are going to play our first game together. Base defenses. One moment and please cut this out of the VOD because there's this stink bug here I need to take care of. Cut it out, Ian. This is not on the test. Damn, where did it go? It's gone. Live and let live is my motto. Normally there aren't that many bugs in Warcraft 3. The ones that do exist, generally we call them a feature and we use it to exploit the AI on creeps. The final thing I want to talk to you about is base defenses. Okay? The orc race has a burrow. This is the food producing structure, like I said, and it can house up to four peons. You put the peons inside the burrow and they start throwing spears. That's cert certain to di dissuade any attackers, isn't it? Well, burrows are an asset in defense, but they are a liability also. They do not enjoy fortified armor. Most buildings have fortified armor, which means they take much less damage from units. However, burrows are heavy armor, just like the grunt. It takes bonus from magic and full from everything else. So burrows are a liability and an asset. Although it can fight back, they are often what gets targeted by any attackers. So you should also repair them if they get attacked. The night elf, actually, their tree of life, which is their main base, it's got hands, doesn't it? It's got hands, it can slap you and it certainly will. So this Tree of Ages has 49 to 60 damage. Let's compare that to the Blade Master, one of the strongest heroes in the game. Oh, he's only got 25 to 50 damage. So this tree hits with the force of a wrecking ball. And so if you go near it, it will slap you pretty hard. So this is how Night Elf bases defend themselves. Take a look at the Ancient of War. This is their barracks. It produces archers, huntress, glaive throwers. But it slaps as well. The shop, it's just a shop. Also slaps. Pretty soft, but still. <coughs> <coughs> and the moon wells, which offer the food, they are actually uh, filled with moon juice, as we call it. You see this number here, the nine? That's the active mana count on the moon well. If it's full, 300 out of 300, 
It has a lot of Moonwell juice. If it's zero, it has none. By right-clicking any of your Night Elf units on a Moonwell, you will drink the Moonwell juice and it will heal you up. But keep in mind that healing mana is much more expensive than health. So if you want to heal your army, first heal everyone that doesn't have mana or you will empty them too quickly and you'll be left on Friday night fight night without any Moonwell juice. And that wouldn't be very good because it's going to be a fun night. Tune in for Friday night fight night. That's the tutorial until now. Feel free to ask more questions. The glasses that are supposed to make me look smart go off so that I can see again because they're yellow tinted. They're all right, but I don't, I no longer need them. We're going to go play a game live.